Thanks everybody, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. In 1994, the world was given what is rightfully considered one of the great romantic comedies of all time, four weddings and a funeral. Now, 25 years later, Hulu has brought in Mindy Kaling to update the classic and bring in a group of incredibly talented new performers to take on the roles. One of them, our next guest, the extremely talented Rebecca Rittenhouse. But first, let's take a look at four weddings and a funeral. Wait, th wait, this is Cash? <laughs> Your boyfriend Cash? Yes. Why are you so surprised? No, I, I'm not. It's just when you hear Cash, you think of like a bad LA rapper, not like a nice ethnic Cash with a K. <laughs> Ooh, Maya, Cash's father works at the airport. Maybe he could help uh, you find that cute guy. Oh, uh, I don't remember mentioning anything like that. Are you like insane? That. You were gushing. She called him Ryan Gosling dipped in caramel. What? <laughs> no. I yeah, don't. you did. You also said super hot, bangable. <laughs> I did not say that. Well, that's that's very nice. Everybody, please welcome Rebecca Brittenhouse. Hey. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Very well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, congratulations on the new show, uh, Four Weddings and a Funeral. I've caught the first few episodes. It's fantastic. It's thank wonderful. Thank you. It's really fun. Yeah, it captures the essence, I think, of the original movie, but updates it to now and has Mindy Kaling's sensibility all over it. All over it. Now, yeah. you've worked with her before, right? You I have, yeah. I was on the last two seasons of her show, The Mindy Project. And what is it like working with someone like Mindy who has a, such a specific style of writing? Uh... It's really fun. You know, I think, like, I know a lot of my girlfriends love her sense of humor and love her as a writer and a performer, and I just think it's kind of something that young women get a lot. But the nice thing about this series is that there are I a lot get of it, too. <laughs> I know. That's a, there's also a lot of fantastic male characters in this, and, like, I think especially the series, there's room for everybody to like it, which is a really hard sort of tone to, to capture. Um, and working with her is just wonderful. She's a great boss and a brilliant writer and a really patient collaborator, collaborator and really respects the artists that she works with. And this project was especially nice because she wrote something for me on this that's completely different than the, the character I played on Mindy, which she was like a very frigid, you know. You can, you can say it. Bitch. Okay. Yeah. Um, but... Ainsley is very lively and She's very warm. effervescent and warm. And uh, yeah, her house is sort of the center of the friend group. Completely yeah. undeserving of what, 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 what comes to her. Thank in you. Yeah. I think very undeserving. But, you know, life happens, I think. And just because two people look like they should be right together doesn't mean they are. I will say, it's almost, it, was, it was the one thing that it was slightly hard for me to wrap my head around in the beginning where I was like, really? She has done nothing wrong, and she's beautiful. It you, has more to do with him, though, right? It's like I, I guess, feel like we see this all the time in relationships. We're like, but he, she's so great. Like, why can't he get his act together for her? And it's because he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. He's been lying to himself his whole life, and I think he really just needs to figure out who he is. And I think the two of them are drawn to each other because it looks so good on paper. And even Ainsley admits in the first episode, you know, she's like, oh, or second episode, like oh, I, I don't actually really know him. I'm actually not sure why I love him other than the things that look good on paper about him, mm -hmm. you know? Do you find that uh, Mindy Kaling has such a specific sensibility when it comes to writing, such a specific voice, that as much as all of the other characters are their own through the performers, you can almost still hear her voice in each of them? Do you ever feel that when you are performing? I think performing? Yeah, you can, but not to the point where the characters don't feel developed in their own right. Of course. You know, um, but it definitely does have her sense of humor. Like, I think in the second episode when... Ainsley comes back to work after being dumped at the altar and finally she's like looking good and feeling good and feeling powerful and then her employee like cuts her down immediately. It reminds me of the scene in Late Night where if you've seen it, mm -hmm. she's she walks up to her new job and she's like, tread softly on my dreams and then she gets hit with a garbage bag. Right. It's like the same, that's the yeah. same sense of humor. Um, so you definitely see it sprinkled throughout there. Yeah, there's also punch lines and lines that feel like you could hear them coming out of Mindy Kaling's absolutely, mouth specifically. Absolutely. Do you ever think when you're doing a line like that, like I'll just do the, I'll just say this line like Mindy would say it, and well, yeah, she'll no, like I definitely that. hear. I I can definitely hear the way that she's thinking of it. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, I get this line. This is how she wants it. Did it feel like you had a leg up on some of the other performers having worked with her one time before that you? <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> no, I, it was just nice to have that rapport that was already developed with her because I think Mindy is such a powerful force that she can she's intimidating. You know, people get like a little bit nervous around her, so it was nice to to not feel to be nervous. the one who's not nervous <laughs> to be the not feel nervous around her and then. I think maybe it was also nice for some of my castmates to be like, oh my God, I'm nervous around Mindy. And I could be like, no, she's really nice. Like, don't be nervous. Right. Because she's the boss. Yeah, but she's she, the boss. She's yeah. the boss. But she's also really collaborative and respectful, like I said. Had you gone back and watched the original movie? Had you seen it? I had seen it, but I hadn't seen it since I was 14 or 15, maybe. I just watched it. You just, oh my God, for the first time? Yeah. What'd you think? Hugh Grant, beautiful. I had no, I had no idea. I think it made I made him a star. It made him a star, but I think I was too young at that time and too much of like a boy to recognize like what people would have liked about Hugh Grant. I just thought he was like this fumbling British man that I didn't get. But watching that movie, I was like, this is a really beautiful, charming no, man. Right, like, he's I brilliant, get this. and he has yeah. so much subtlety in his performance. And that movie is really funny, but it's also really moving. And I it's think very that we natural. Know that too. That's yes. the one thing that's so strange about that movie I found was that compared to almost every romantic comedy that really followed it, there's something so natural and shaggy dog about yeah, that movie. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel like it's desperately trying to hit the beats. No, it's not. It, it feels more real than that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, if you guys want to go watch the other the movie. You should. It's fantastic. It's on Hulu. It's a classic. Um, so when you, after having watched that or having seen that, did you ask questions about how this would relate to the original movie? Were you curious or did you know pretty much right away that it was going to be jumping off and do its own thing? I think I knew pretty much right away she, she wanted to make it its own thing. Um, but she approached me about it in the final season of the Mindy Project right before we, we wrapped and she mentioned she was going to be doing this thing. and it Really? That was, was a couple years ago, Yes, right? it was early on. Wow. It was early on and she was like, you know, I'd, I'd love for you to be a part of it. And I was like, I would love to be a part of it. Please don't forget about me. So um, Yeah, yeah, check my schedule. We'll see what I can do. Oh, you have no idea. I was like, stay available. Um, but I... To be honest with you, I just had so much faith in Mindy and Matt Warburton as well, who worked on the Mindy Project and also wrote on this, created this, this with Mindy. I just had so much faith and trust in them that um, I wasn't sure exactly how close, how far it was going to be. I knew they wanted to make it more of its own story, but I didn't really know. You know, I didn't see a script until almost a year after... Mindy mentioned it to me. That would still be like 2017, right? That was, no, that was, so she approached me in 2017. And, oh, okay. then, uh, and then the first script I saw was in the summer of 2018. Wow. And, when and then we started shooting November of 2018. And did it, was it, was it something where you shot the pilot and then went back later or you just straight to series shot the whole yeah, thing? Yeah, we shot 10 episodes and, and our schedule got kind of zany. So we ended up shooting like, four episodes at a time or something like that. It was, it was, a, um, it was fun, but it was like, I was like, where am I? What day is it? Now she approached you and said, I'm writing this thing and I'm writing something for you, which is a different thing than when you go in and you audition for something and you get a part and you become that part. What does it feel like when you see this part that she has said that she's written for I you? I mean, I've you? never been more excited in my life. But do you feel like it encapsulates you in some way? Do you I, think she was yeah, trying I to capture it, you as who you are? Well... Maybe in some ways, yes, but the the original version was actually like a pretty different character and maybe, I don't know if maybe it developed more, I don't think it had very much to do with me, mm -hmm. but I I do feel like it's kind, it, it still amazes me that, that she wrote this character for me because she had seen me do the frigid wasp character on Mindy that was so different that I'm just honestly so grateful that she wrote something so different for me. And, and I think as time went on um, and as you see what's what an actor is bringing to a specific part, you start to go further with it, right? Because like, you know, you, you still have scripts that you're still polishing as you're shooting some, an earlier script. So I think that even got more and more developed as I sort of started to figure out who she was. Do you relate more to the effervescent Ainsley or to the frigid person from the I think I'm completely two-faced and I have both in me. Both in you? Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes I'm really moody and like cold and then other times I'm not at all and I, and I have Angel Ainsley's energy. She has a lot of energy. <laughs> 
do you think that Mindy saw you in between takes on the Mindy project and was like, oh, she would be so great for this sort of warm person because this is clearly I don't more know. who I she is? I have no idea. Now I'm going to ask her that question. So Did you me? know that I actually wasn't a frigid block <laughs> of ice? I mean, that's a question that I've, I've asked actors that before and they say, I never ask the creators, why me? Just go with it. Yeah, I mean, no, I didn't I didn't want to say why me. I was like, I just want to keep working with you. Uh, you're also in a another big thing that just came out this this past weekend. What you're in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the What's new Quentin it? Tarantino movie. <laughs> you are in it. I'm in it, I made it in. Uh, you made it in. And I and I, I knew this because before well, I saw it on Monday and then I saw it again on Thursday last week, but I knew you were coming in this week and I was like, Who do oh she's in it? Who does she play? And I saw you right away. I could tell right away who you were supposed to be in that scene. Yeah. I, I played Michelle Phillips, which was just cool. It's kind of like a funny little story. I, I did not audition to play that part, but then I think that Mr. Tarantino saw my audition tape and was like, oh, she looks like Michelle Phillips. I want her to be Michelle Phillips. And so we had that like fun moment with Mama Cass and Sharon Tate and Michelle Phillips, who were actually friends. Mm -hmm. um, so Can I ask who you auditioned to play initially? I auditioned to, to play Abigail um, Folger, right. the girl who plays the piano. Right. So... Um, yeah, it's just like a kind of a funny little turn of events there. And I'm I really almost chickened out because I'm I can play ish, but I wasn't very good. I'm pretty sure I embarrassed myself in that. Oh, the piano at the end. The piano oh, I, I had you. to yeah. sing and play and, and um uh luckily I didn't chicken out because being on that set, even though I'm you know, I'm in the movie for a minute or something, it it was uh a really exciting experience and just yeah. I mean, working with Quentin Tarantino is like a dream. I mean, you're part of, you are in a couple of the biggest shots in the movie as well. I mean, yeah, these, the Playboy Mansion. Yeah, thing, with yeah. these beautiful crane shots that kind of fly over the mansion into yeah. the backyard. Yeah, like, and they shot that a lot of different ways. It was so fascinating to see how it turned out. But, really? you know, the way that they, you know, followed the car in was beautiful on that yeah. crane. Yeah. We opened with seeing you, you're smoking a joint, right? Yeah. With a group of people. Yeah, I smoked a fake joint for like. 12 hours <laughs> the next day I was like ah. how long were you uh, how long was that shoot was it just a day I, two days I did three days but there was a three whole days. there was a whole nother sequence that didn't make it into the movie that would that was at Tommy's Burgers yeah unbelievable yeah that scene was actually really cool there were a lot of like low riders and it was a whole scene it was a real vibe it was cool but we ate like three Tommy's Burgers at like three in the morning or something I was like I think maybe I don't need any more Tommy's Burgers so you had a whole life. other scene that you that you were a part of as this character, yeah. and that got and that got cut. Yeah, but the movie is like you know amazing. Th that that the that scene definitely wasn't crucial to the movie. I understand why it's not in the movie, but it did was you, fun. Did you know that? It, well, I guess you wouldn't know that it wasn't crucial while you were shooting because you don't get to see yeah no, the entirety you, no, of the script, right? No, you don't right? get to see. No, they're very um, sort of secretive about the scripts and what you you get to see what you're a part of and. I have to ask, what was it like being on that set? Not just because it's Quentin Tarantino, but because there are no cell phones. Non, no cell phones. There are no. There are no non-comic book, non-superhero movies that are oh, budgeted that, like that yeah. and get to look like that and get filmmakers. Filmmakers get the chance to shoot an entire sequence that might not make it in the movie. Yeah, it's a dream. Honestly, you feel like you're in a dream because you feel like you, you've traveled back in time because every detail is correct. Every detail is specific everything I wore was from the era and the costume designer was so specific about you know she's like oh uh, you know Michelle Phillips would wear this but she wouldn't wear this because that's like something another actress or another musician or another celebrity at the time wow. would wear but Michelle Phillips wouldn't wear that she knows she she got to be really specific and thoughtful and I think every department head got to be that way about um, every detail of the film Meanwhile, he gets to shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot, it feels like, I bet, right? Yeah, and he loves shooting. I mean, he's like, he's the most enthusiastic, um, energetic, positive director you can imagine. He really? just loves what he does. I heard a story, I read a story recently where, uh, for Kate Berlant, who plays the woman in the uh, the ticket, uh, at the movie theater, taking the tickets from Sharon Tate, on her first take, he said, Kate Berlant, don't fuck this up. <laughs> Did you get anything like that from him when you were, when you were starting? 
Well, he likes to joke around a lot. So I think, you know, he probably, I, I like threw in some random lines. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say that, Rittenhouse. Say that. Like, he's just, <laughs> he's just like a fun guy. He just, he loves what he's doing. Do any other directors refer to you as Rittenhouse? Uh, Mindy refers to me as Rittenhouse. Really? Yeah. Always. How did I that, don't know if she I mean, knows great, my first it name. It is a great last name. I will, <laughs> I will tell you that. Yeah, it is. It's actually my mom's last name. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's like a Philadelphia family thing. Do you know how it started? That uh, Not how your last name started, but how Mindy started calling you that? I don't know. It just immediately was a thing. Immediately. I, don't, I, I, like, I can't even imagine her saying Rebecca. <laughs> I can't. Do you, I, forgive me for forgetting, but in that sequence in the Playboy Mansion, you do you run into the backyard with, yeah. with yeah, Margo and, and dance and, and do the whole yeah, dancing sequence? Yeah, the three of us and Rachel Redleaf, who plays Mama Cass, the three of us run and then, you know, Margo's doing her sort of... 60s swing, yeah, swinger dance? Yeah, yeah. and um, I just tried to, like... Michelle Phillips is a funny character because, like, I watched videos of her while she's performing, and she, there's one where she's just, like, sort of, like, swaying and, like, eating a banana. And I was like, I think if I just, like, sway and look like I'm pretty stoned, that's You're not work. dancing with Jay in the sequence, are you? Or uh, with he was, He's just, he's, like, right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, it's sort of all you're of Like, us. in the shot, everybody's yeah, sort yeah. of dancing. And you, your dance was to sway like you had a banana. Yeah, she didn't really move a lot. You know, she wasn't, like, she wasn't, like, a beautiful dancer like Sharon Tate, but, like, she just kind of was, like... She had a chill sort of hippie vibe going. She's literally eating a banana while she's performing California Dreamin' in some video. It's like the most amazing thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I think we have time for a couple questions uh, from the audience. Does anybody have a question? For, right here, sir? Yes? What's your question? Hello. Hi. Hi. You have a microphone. What's your question? Uh, my name is Phil. <laughs> Phil this is my childhood friend, Phil. Yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hell is uh, going on hi. here? So I want to know if Radiohead is still a really big influence to you. Uh, yes, obviously. I love Radiohead. Still one of my favorite bands. Rebecca was Oliver in high school. It was a very successful No, I, w I didn't play Oliver. I played Nancy. Oh, you played but I did play the okay. baker. Is that I, what you're talking about in Into the Woods? Uh, when I played a man? Must have been yeah. that. Must mm -hmm. have been that. He yeah. thought I cut my hair off. I was like, it's a wig, Phil. Oh. <laughs> was Radiohead a big influence on you in high school? Yes. Like, yeah. loved, how loved, did you, loved. How did you discover Radiohead? Do you remember? I have no idea, but I remember going to their concert at the Greek, and they opened with You and Who's Army, and I was like, my life has changed. Yeah, that was an amazing... <sighs> was You and Who's Army the amnesiac tour, or was that... That was... Or is that No, later? that must have been after that. Maybe I Hail think. to the... Ch that one? I think one? it was that right. one, yeah. I went I went to the for the Kid A tour, and the, and the, la the most recent mm. one. They're like one of the most incredible live bands I mean, there yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Hi, um, I was wondering when was the first time you met Mindy, if you remember? Uh, I met her at the first table read for the first episode I was in. So that was season five, episode four, I think. I don't know. Yeah, it was at the table read. I was very nervous. Uh, Rebecca, it's so good to have you back. It's good to see yeah, you. Congrats for me. on Once Upon a Time in hollywood thank you and congrats on four weddings and a funeral i think the show is lovely it's so much fun and you're great in it thank you it premieres this week on who everybody give rebecca a huge round of applause for being here thank you 